flight has arrived from Montego Bay. During a routine passenger search, UK border officers have found a package that looks like it could contain drugs. The passenger has been arrested. Uh, the lady came off the Montego Bay flight and uh, she was intercepted oh. by one of our officers. Upon searching her bag, he found a package which we believed to contain cocaine. Took her to a search room. Whilst the package was being tested, the package tested positive for cocaine. Knowing she's been caught red-handed. What, in this bit here? Other packages of in, right, okay, let's stop. Right, this is uh, what was found in the back of the suitcase. It's what we would call a stuffer's package, which would be put up somebody's uh, backside, probably. But that was found in the bag, and that was what we uh, decided made it a job. And then uh, during the ship search, we found this, which is all full of cocaine attached to her waist. The audacious smuggling attempt also involved some highly modified underwear. This little uh, body packer suit filled with cocaine. It's a massive amount of drugs for one person to be carrying. Nearly two and a half kilos of coke on the body. The seizure demonstrates the officer's skill in identifying smugglers. Just stopped just to ask her a few questions. No real reason to stop her over anybody else. Historically, we tend to get more cannabis than we do cocaine in the flight. So she obviously saw her opportunity, knowing what she had on her person, and just walked through the channels. Unfortunately for her, she was stopped. Are we cuffing? Suddenly realising how much trouble she's in, the woman goes into shock. <laughs> right, no more jumping around, okay? Stand up straight. Yeah? You're going to walk with me? You're gonna walk. Gonna I know it's hard, but you just need to. The woman is taken to a holding bag for further questioning. Officers will need to be extra vigilant to ensure that she doesn't try to harm herself again. In Manchester, officers have received a call for backup from the other terminal. A passenger's fruit has given a massive hit for Class A drugs. We've just been called over to Terminal 3. Um, there's a lady, I believe, travelling from Barbados. Um, is it via Gatwick, Gary? Or Heathrow? It's on one of the shuttles. Uh, we believe they've found cocaine in yams. Um, so we're just coming over uh, to see what's going on. Cocaine can be hidden anywhere. And with a street value of £50,000 per kilo, cocaine in mangoes, is it? To extraordinary yams, sorry. Yams. And have you x-rayed them? I've x-rayed them, just a bulky mass. Um, right. You couldn't tell okay. from the x-ray whatsoever. The initial trace was off the scale. Yeah. But Border Officer Liz thinks it may be a false alarm. OK, we're not sure we've actually got anything. Um, the officer spiked one of the yams and he's got a really high reading for cocaine off the, uh, off the machine there. But it's possible just contamination on the, on the, on the spike. So we're just going to cut right into these. We've had it in mangoes, coconuts, pineapples. Looks like there's nothing in these though, unfortunately. Investigating further, the officers discover more potentially incriminating details. The woman's passport is brand new and her ticket was paid for in cash. Is someone meeting her? Her mum says she's, she's yeah. meeting her. I mean, if you, if you want to put stab vests on, yeah, and go and have a word and just verify a story, there's no harm there. Still suspicious, the officers decide to investigate the woman's claim. She's being mailed by her mother. Obviously, for our protection, we need to have body armour on, in case if it is a drugs job, the people who are meeting will obviously be looking for those drugs and be rather upset. So we need to be armoured up. Just going to take your shoes for a second. That's yours as well. Officers continue to carry out tests for drugs. Go ahead. When someone's got an internal concealment for drugs, their sweat um, comes out onto the shoes and the drugs shows in the sweat. So 
it's an indication that they might have something. They could have taken something, but it gives us grounds to to do um, an internal body scan or something like that. It's come back negative, so there's no trace on the shoes. The woman's the smell. Smell. The team carry out more drug tests on the baggage. But she's not really got many clothes or anything for a month's stay. It's that bag as well. That's a bag constellation that. A while ago, we had a lot of seizures in. A Lima 3 2, Lima 3 2, Yankee 1 2. To meet the woman's mother. No, there's no one out there waiting for her. Yes, yes. It's very strange, though, that a mum's not waiting for her outside. If, uh, but, you know, that in itself is not enough, is it? So she might have been delayed. With no sign of the mother, the woman remains under arrest yeah. until the officers can prove that she's telling the truth. The woman found carrying two and a half kilos of cocaine has been transported to the customer's cells. You okay? Keep walking forward. Have you got anything inside you that's hurting? No? No. Okay, do you want to come forward? I'm going to take a seat for me. To harm herself, officers have handcuffed the woman. Deep breath and speak for you. If the officer takes you, I understand you are banging your head upstairs. If the officer takes your cuffs off, you promise me not to do that here, yeah? Just move this way. I don't want you damaged. I'm here to look after your welfare and your rights and your health. I don't want you damaging yourself while you're here. Right. Put your hands up for me. This lady's arrived from Montego Bay this morning. Search of the hand baggage revealed a cylindrical package. A cut was made in the package, which revealed a white paste. Okay. Harold, are you? <laughs> Sorry, can't hear you. Have you also swallowed? I need to know from no. a health and safety point of view. If you have, it's a danger to yourself. I don't take drugs. <laughs> so you haven't swallowed no. anything as well? No. Okay, that's good. Having found a substantial I just want to go in there for me. Right, what it is, is it's just going to be another search. And then there's the hairpiece. All right. I didn't even notice that was up. You have to do lots in that, yeah? Yeah, I searched it already. When we told her that we were going to take her to custody um, and put her into a cell, she started slapping her own face and banging her head on the table, which is obviously not a good sign. So myself and another officer ran into the room and restrained her and applied some handcuffs. We now have to watch her because of her behaviour and, you know, we have to be extra alert, not knowing how she's going to react when she gets locked into a cell, how she's going to act when she's on her own, if she's going to try and harm herself. I do feel sorry for them sometimes because you wonder what it takes for them to actually do something like this. Yeah, just that amount on the person, two and a half kilos is a lot to have, it's, it's quite greedy. Having already shown signs that she's prepared to self-harm, Officers must ensure that nothing further happens to her whilst they're in custody. Because of that sort of thing, she might try and top herself, so we have to watch them on camera. And she'll have to get used to being locked up. She was sentenced to seven years in prison. In Manchester, officers are discussing the woman arrested on suspicion of smuggling cocaine in Yams. I don't really think I've got enough to, no, to do any further. I don't think you've got enough to go any further, to be honest with you. But obviously, the reason you arrest her in the first place is because you, you thought you had drugs in the yams. Now, if you haven't... Um, to an arrest her. Well, yeah. But wait for Gary to come back in and see what Gary says, because obviously he's, uh, he's in charge. But I would say you haven't really got enough. No. Officer Gary radios through to say he's all right, okay. Having found All right, no draw. further evidence of cocaine, officers accept their false readings must have come from using a contaminated right. knife. We've, we've looked in your bags, we've looked further, um, and in further investigation, looking into the yams and stuff, there isn't anything in there. We've made a mistake. When we tested it, it's given a false reading on our machine, so there isn't anything in there. So you're no longer under arrest. And I want to apologise for keeping you but thank you for your patience anyway and you can relax now okay so we're going to repack all your bags and then we'll 
get let you go outside, all right? Okay, and hopefully you'll enjoy your holiday here. Whilst it's been an unnecessary ordeal for the woman, it shows that Class A drug hits must be investigated properly to ensure only guilty smugglers end up behind bars. go through this way, that's the, the way out. Okay, just keep going through. Thank you. Coming up, smugglers don't wash with the border officers in Manchester. Don't insult my intelligence, mate. On your best day, you're not as good as me on my worst day. You're not scared of customs officers, are you? Officers, That's lovely. Thanks very much. So you've been asked to take this child yes. back to its mum. It's a quiet afternoon at Manchester Airport. A flight from Sweden has just landed. UK border officers have caught a suspected cigarette smuggler walking through baggage we play. Three big, uh, three big suitcases full of ciggies. So we're going to have to uh, come down, but he's, they're all going to leave. He's laughing and I think. We have to come down. We're going to have a... It looks like they're all loose and that, so we're going to have to count them. Do you speak English? Yeah, don't mess, bit, don't mess bit, around. A bit. a bit, yeah. You can yeah. see you speak enough English to smuggle cigarettes. Right, what flight are you on? Did you get the tickets? Stockholm flight. What carousel were you on? This carousel? The man started his journey in Estonia, a known source country for cheap cigarettes. Just notice this guy leaving, and they're all full. Where's he come from? Uh, Sweden. So he started his journey in Estonia. And when did you fly back to Estonia? No. Hmm? What do you mean you don't know? No. I'm a You must have a ticket to go back to Estonia. Well, when, when is it? I don't hear it yet. You no. haven't been given it yet? I haven't, haven't bought it yet. No, when, what day are you flying back to Estonia? I didn't, I, I haven't decided yet. All right, in here. Seasoned Officer Gary isn't amused by the man's vague answers. Uh, I've just come, obviously, got to come outside and saw this guy wandering around outside looking for the exit. And when I looked at his bags, they look quite... So they look quite square. So when I went over to speak to him, he told me he was from Estonia, which is a place where a lot of people bring cigarettes in from. When I felt the bag, they were rock hard, which suggests to us that they're full of cigarettes. And they, they are. Happy days. So how many times have you been to the UK? A few. How many? The man's failure to answer simple questions is starting to annoy Gary. Look, let's get let's start from the beginning. Don't don't play stupid. Right? What do you mean? Don't pretend that you don't know how many times you've been to the UK. You do know. Is it once, twice, three times, ten times? Well that's fine, then that's the answer. I don't remember exactly. What do you mean you don't remember? When was the last time you came here? Long time ago. When? I can go in and check the airlines, so you either tell me the truth or I'll find out. I tell you, maybe a couple of months. Right. And on that occasion you had cigarettes as well? No. No. As officers uncover more and more cigarettes, it looks like it could be their biggest seizure ever. At Gatwick Airport, passengers are preparing to board a flight to Ghana. Lovely, thank you. Right. Thanks very much. Which could have links to organise the crime. Okay, you're not scared of customs officers, are you? Sorry? You're not scared of customs officers. This ticket, did you buy this yourself? No, my sponsor. You who? My sponsor bought it for Your me. sponsor? In Ghana. In Ghana. As well as looking for oh, the yeah. Just... officers are on the lookout for drugs and to check the immigration status of passengers. Hello. Do you carry any cash with you today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you damn sure about how much you have with you? Um, I think it's thousand. Uh, I'm going to give you to his mom. Yeah. How much do you have? That's the question I asked. Uh, Money. Thousand and fifty. Any more? Any more cash? Any more cash? My, pers my personal cash. How much do you have in total? Uh, roughly. Roughly. 
roughly, let's say about 400 for personal cash. Okay. Thank you. All right. The Hello, it's just two of you travelling. Yes. Please. Yeah, just have a quick word with you. Okay. No, you got your hands full there. <laughs> you told the officer when the, the dog indicated you had yeah. 400 pounds in personal cash. Yeah. Are you carrying any cash for anybody else at all? Yeah, that's one thing. I mean, it's how, how much have you got in total? Um, 1,050. Could you show me that, please? Yes. Is there any more cash in the baggage here? No, no, no. So, who does the child belong to? Is it your son? Is it no, yours? no, it's a friend. So, you've been asked to take this child yes, back to its mum? Yes, OK, hold on a second. The man's story rings alarm bells for Paul. I need your help in a minute. OK. What's your relationship? And where's the father at the moment? The father is at the airport. At the airport. Yes. He's not flying, though. No, he's not flying. This gentleman's flying. taken a child out that's oh, okay. not his. Right. With the flight due to leave in 20 minutes. Officers have I'll leave that with you. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, um, where, do, where, does, where does the child normally live? In Ghana or in the UK? Um, this is my first time here. I came to meet him here. Right. And we go to check together. And he asked me if I can do him a favour and take his son to Ghana. But the okay. dad is at the airport. So the parents live in the UK? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. right. What we've got a situation where a gentleman is travelling out with a small boy. Um, he's not related to the child. Uh, so I'm going to try and make some inquiries with the parents um, to check where the child normally lives. The child appears to have been here about a year on a visit visa, which is um, possibly longer than we would expect on that type of visa. So I want to know what the immigration status of the parents is as well, really. With passengers starting to board the plane, decision must be made imminently about whether the man and the child will be moving. Do you know what the full number is? In Manchester, officers are still counting the thousands of cigarettes intercepted from an Australian smuggler. So who are you meeting outside? Nobody. Who are you giving these cigarettes to? Somebody. Yeah, who? Don't you know his name? I, I don't know. I, I just uh, ran into here. And he will take them off you outside. No. Where do you have? Me myself. Where do you have to go to hand them over? Manchester. Maybe, maybe London. London. Maybe. I don't, it, it's not the point. Where? No, it is to me. It may not be to you, but I'm asking you. Where do you take the cigarette? If you don't know. Don't they tell you where the cigarettes are going? Well, the, well, you're not doing this on your own, are you? It's obviously a gang. Don't insult my intelligence, mate. Right? On your best day, you're not as good as me on my worst day. Right, so either say nothing, don't give me any rubbish. I know what's going on here. Right? It takes three officers to count the enormous number of cigarettes. Total count is 46,560. It's a huge seizure of cigarettes with a street value of more than £20,000. As you're probably aware, all these cigarettes are going to be seized. Do you understand that? And all the bags that they were carried in are going to be seized. Right? Why bags? Because I said so. All right, what I'm doing now, I'm getting you a receipt for the cigarettes, right? I'm going to give you a receipt. I'm going to give you a warning letter, because next time you will be arrested. Do you understand that? Yeah. You come in here with all these cigarettes again, I will arrest you. Do you understand? OK, there's the door. With no previous convictions, the man is allowed to go free. But next time, he'll end up behind bars. They try and think that they can say whatever they want to say. No, at the end of the day, we will arrest these people. It's, I just don't like the idea that they can just be so blasé about it all, uh, as if we can't do anything about it. Well, we will. At Gatwick Airport, officers have just moved yeah, to decide the whether a child Sorry, will be allowed to leave for Ghana with a man who isn't his father. Right, I've just checked the status of the um, mother and the father. The father appears to be in the UK on some sort of permit. If you hold the line one second, put the, uh, yeah. the father on the phone. 
Hello, sir. Hi, I understand you're the child's father. Right, yeah, um, and you've, you've given a covering letter um, for Mr. Bonsu to travel with the child. Okay, can you just confirm to me, sir, what's your own immigration status in the UK? How long have you got your visa for? Do you know when they rejected that application? When would that be, roughly? You can understand the reasons why we need to make sure. Maybe you don't want me getting up to Exactly, exactly, that's the reason. Especially with, particularly with children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. And you, have you made any application uh, for the child to be in the UK as a resident? As the final call is made for all remaining passengers, officers must go and make a decision. You're right there, Jane. Yeah, um, I've spoken to the father and I've done some checks with our own database and he's able to verify some of what's on there, so I'm happy that he is the father. Right, so they go allowed to travel. Yeah, yeah. I'm endorsing the passports with their departure date, uh, well, with the, the child's anyway, because he's been here too long on the wrong visa, basically. Um, but the checks um, confirm our records, so yeah, I'm going to allow them to travel. Better get them on their way though. Okay, I spoke to the father and he's verified most of my checks, so that's fine. Okay, there you go. Okay. Cheers then, thank you. Although under pressure, the officers are happy they made the right decision. I was very aware that the clock's ticking and you've got to make a decision, you know, whether to offload them and make a whole load more inquiries, but um, yeah, I think I wrapped it up just in time.